Last lecture, we talked about how the quantity demanded respond, respond to um, changes in the price. We assume that all other factors remain the same or they don't change. So we know the direction of the relationship. So when the price of a good increases, then the quantity demand decreases. But we didn't know by how much. So how much um, the quantity demand will decrease when the uh, price will increase. So if the price increased. Again, we, the same thing with supply. We, we don't know really how much or how responsive um, the quantity supplied will be to changes in the price. So what we know so far is when price increases, quantity demand decreases. And when price increases for a, for a, for a product, the quantity supply will increase as well. So there is negative relationship between quantity demand and price and positive relationship between quantity supplied and price. So what we didn't know, what we didn't know so far, how much, how much this decrease or how responsive the um, quantity demand will be to change in the price, the same thing with quantity supplied. So what we will learn today is how much or how responsive uh, quantity demand to uh, change in the price, the same thing with quantity supply, by looking at elasticity. So elasticity is just a measure of responsiveness. So how response, how how the uh, how much the quantity will respond to change in the price. So we will learn how to calculate this um, elasticity for price. So we learn about the price elasticity of demand. We'll do the same for income elasticity and for uh, cross elasticity. We will understand how to interpret these and how to, um, how to calculate them. Also, we'll do, this, we'll do the same with um, uh, supply. So let's start. So the idea here uh, with demand, let's start with demand, the price elasticity of demand. So again, what we said last lecture, we said when the price increases, just remember we assume that all other factors remain the same, so they're not gonna change. We assume when the price, uh, we know when the price increases, the quantity demand will decrease. So today we'll see how responsive, how the, this response will happen when the, quanti when the price change. So how the quantity demand will respond. So that's what we call um, elasticity. And with elasticity, it's um, a unit free measure, which means we are just gonna have a number and we need to learn how to interpret that number, how to explain that number. So the idea is we could have looked at the, the slope of the demand curve, and this will, um, depend, depending on how steep uh, the, the demand curve, this will tell us how responsive the quantity demand to the, the, um, the prices. But the problem is that when, when you look at the slope, the slope is, um, is determined by the unity measure uh, by which you measure qu uh, quantities and prices. But with elasticity, so it's, uh, it's, um, it's free from that. So you don't have to worry about uh, the way you measure uh, quantity demanded and price. So, we start with price elasticity of demand. So remember, when we look at price elasticity of demand, so we're looking at the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. How we uh, define this, so it's the responsiveness, so how the quantity demand will respond to change in the price. And to calculate this, we simply calculate the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Okay, so the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. So what is the percent change in quantity demanded? So it's basically is a change in, in quantity demanded divided by um, the average uh, quantity demanded. Let me show an example, and I'll explain why we look at the average. So this is the demand curve for uh, pizza, and let's say this is the uh, initial price. It's uh, at 20.50. Uh, at this price, the quantity demanded is nine okay so we have got nine pizza um, demanded per hour if the price is 20.5 so this is the original point so what if the price changed to 19.5 uh, 
then the quantity demand will increase to 11 pizzas. So how would we calculate the, the elasticity? So as I said, elasticity, you're looking at the personal change in quantity demanded divided by the personal change in price. So let's first look at how we calculate the personal change in uh, quantity uh, demanded and the personal change in, in, in price. So what I highlighted here is the change, not the personal change. So the first one is the, the price changed by $1. So there's uh, $1. Um, um, that's, that's how much the, 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 the pizza became cheaper. Now it's just $1 less. So now it is 19.5 rather than 20.5. So that's the change. So what we want to do, we want to look at the person change. So the same thing with the quantity demanded. So the quantity demanded was nine and then became 11. So we have two more pizzas uh, ordered or demanded at the new price. So that's the change in the quantity demand. Then all what we need to do now is to find the average price and the average quantity demand. How we calculate the average? So you sum these two divided by two. So if, for example, if I want to know the average price, so it's 20.5 plus 19.5 divided by 2. So this is the two prices. You divide by 2, you get the, uh, the average price. And the average price here is 20. So this will give you 20. The same thing, so this is the, this is the average price. The same thing you can do with the uh, quantity demand. So what we have here, so 9 plus 11 divided by 2, this will give you 10. So how we calculate the person change then? So the person change in quantity demand means the change in the quantity demand, which is 2, divided by the average price, which is 10. So 2 divided by 10. So that's the person change in quantity demand. Then the same with the, the price. So we have, this is uh, the change in the price, which, which is $1, divided by the average price, which is 20. So how we calculate elasticity? We divide the person change in quantity demanded by the person change in the price. So here we go. So this is the person change in quantity demanded. So it's the change in quantity divided by the average quantity demand. So this is 2 divided by 10. Here, that's 2, the change in uh, quantity demanded. Divided by 10, 10 here is the average quantity demanded. This will give us 20%. So that's the person change in quantity demanded. Okay, the person change in uh, price, so it's, it's the same way, so it's the change in the price divided by the average price. So the change in the price here is $1 because now the pizza was 20.5, now became 19.5, so the difference is $1. So this is the change in the price divided by the average price, and again, the average is just you sum these two together, 20 plus you add these divided by 2, so 20 Point five plus 19.5 divided by 2 will give you 20. So 20 here is the average price. So what we need to do here is just to divide this, the change in the price, which is $1, divided by 20. This will give you 5%. So the percent change um, in, um, in the price is 5%. So what is elasticity or how to calculate is elasticity again? So elasticity is the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in uh, and price. So that is, that's the, the formula here. So the person change in quantity demanded divided by the person change in price. This means 20% divided by 5%. This will give us 4. Remember, I told you this is a unit free measure, which means it doesn't depend on any measure. So just, uh, it's just a number. So, and we're looking at that number. And by looking at this number, we should be able to tell how the uh, how responsive the quantity demand is to changes in the price. So before I go to interpret or to explain what this uh, number means, so let's just go back to the, the main idea. So the main idea, we're trying to see how much or how responsive the quantity demand will be to changes in the price. And the measure that help us to know this is, is called elasticity. And the advantage uh, behind using this measure, elasticity, is, is unit free, so which means it doesn't, it doesn't depend on the way we measure the, the, the price or the quantity demanded. So whatever the way you measure, uh, these two 
at the end you will get you should get the same uh, number for elasticity for the same good. So in that case or in the case we have now we're looking at the price elasticity of demand. So there are two things to keep in mind. First thing is the the sign, and the second thing is the value or the magnitude of this number. So the sign is meaningless; it doesn't mean anything with um, with the case of the price elasticity of demand. Why I'm saying this now? Because when we look at income elasticity and cross elasticity, it will be meaningful and it will mean something, and we need to understand what it means. So in in all cases with the um, price elasticity of demand, the sign should be negative, should be minus. And we ignore it, and you didn't even see it on this slide. Okay? So why it will be always negative? Because there is a negative relationship between the price and quantity demanded. We know this from last lecture. So we know they, uh, they move in opposite directions. So if the price increase, quantity demanded decrease. If the price decrease, quantity demand will increase. So they're moving in opposite directions. And that's why the the sign will be always negative and that's why we ignore it so it's not meaningful it doesn't say anything so we know what we know that it will be always negative so now we're looking at the magnitude or the absolute value so the absolute value just ignoring the sign for a second we're looking at just this number 4 before i just explain what 4 means so let's see the the different cases we would expect when we calculate the price elasticity of demand so we've got five cases two of which are very extreme and rare cases. And let me show you um, these cases. Sorry, where did you look at that? So that's the first case, perfectly inelastic demand. And in this case, you will see the demand curve is vertical. Remember, this is an extreme case, and it's a very rare case, and it's, it's, it's uh, um, it's when the quantity demand does not respond to changes in the price. How, how would we see this in the graph? So you'll see that now, if the price is six, the quantity demand is the same. If the price increased to 12, the, the quantity demand is, gonna, is going to be the same. So that's perfectly inelastic, means it does not respond at all to changes in the price, okay? Um, so that's one extreme case. Uh, the other extreme, or oh, before going to the other extreme, let's look at the, uh, the other four cases. And in this case, by the way, the elasticity will be zero. So there is no response. So when you calculate elasticity, you should uh, uh, have zero. So if you have zero, that means this is a perfectly inelastic uh, demand. Um, moving to um, the unit elasticity or unit elastic demand, that means elasticity equal to one. So if elasticity equal to one, that means the person change in quantity demanded equal the person change in price. So that's how you get one. And that's unit elastic uh, demand. This is the second case. So the third case when you have the elasticity is, remember, we're not looking at the, the sign, we're looking at the, the value, the, the magnitude, the absolute value of this number. So if you have it more than one, which is the case we have now, we got four. So four, in the, in the case of beads, we have uh, the elasticity equal four, so that means greater than one. So if it's greater than one, that means we have elastic uh, uh, demand. If it is less than one, we have inelastic demand. So if it is less than one, then we have inelastic demand. If it is greater than one, as I said, it is uh, elastic demand. So now, there's no response at all, so that's perfectly inelastic. And elasticity will be zero. Unit elastic demand, if the person change in quantity demand is equal to the person change in price, and then elasticity would be one. Or the other two cases here, which is elastic and inelastic demand. So elastic means it's greater than one. Elasticity is greater than one. Or if it, if it is inelastic, then elasticity will be less than one and less than one means it's between it's going to be between it's going to be between zero and one so it's going to be like a fraction like 0 0.10 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.5 0 0.9 and, and so on so it's between zero and and one the last case or the fifth case here which perfectly elastic demand so we have a horizontal uh, demand curve 
okay and elasticity will be infinite so when you calculate elasticity you should expect to see if if you have a perfectly uh, elastic demand it should be infinite yeah you have questions any questions no no questions okay so um so by the way if uh, if i'm going um too fast just let me no, and I will slow down because I think this is something I hear from the other group. Some some students came and say that I'm just going too fast. So if you want me to repeat anything, if you have any questions, just interrupt me and ask me. Okay? Exactly. So now questions come. So <laughs> so which so you want to you want me to um, say like the five cases again, or start from the beginning? The the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. So again, so let's think of elasticity because this is very important. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I'll slow down. I'll start from the beginning. So let's... Okay, okay so quiet, please. So just think of elasticity. Remember what we covered last lecture. So we know when the price increases, you, you buy less. As, as a customer or as a buyer, you will buy less. We assume that other factors that affect demand will remain the same. So if the price increases, then you will buy less. So there's negative relationship, so they're moving in opposite direction. But the law of demand doesn't tell us how responsive the quantity demanded will be to changes in the price. So what we're looking at here is elasticity, and this is the measure that tells us how responsive the quantity demand will be to changes in the price so what you need to understand or what you need to know here is how to calculate elasticity and how to interpret this number the one that the number you get when you calculate elasticity as i said we look we look at price elasticity of demand that's the first type of elasticity we look at but there will be also income elasticity gross elasticity and supply but we if you understand this one if you understand price elasticity of demand so if anything else or anything uh, uh, will come later now and today in this lecture will be very easy to follow. So the idea here is if you know how to calculate elasticity, you should know how to calculate the percentage change. Percentage change is the change over the average. Okay, so the change is very, very simple. So if the price in our example was 20.5, then it went down to 19.5. So how much is the change? Just one pound or one dollar, okay? It's one dollar. So that's the change in the price. But I don't want the change in the price. I want the percentage change. So I want to divide this by something else. So we divide this by the average price. So if you've done statistics or um, I don't know, from math, from mathematics, you, you should know that the average is that if you sum these two together, divide it by two. So what are the prices we have? We have 20.5 and 19.5. If you add this together, divide by two, because we have two prices, then this will give you the average of 20. So all what we have now, we have the change, which you said $1, divided by the average, which is 20. Okay, so it's 1 divided by 20. That's, if you understand how to calculate the percentage change in price, then it's the same way we calculate the percentage change in quantity. Okay, so, the quanti so how we calculate elasticity, then it's the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in, uh, in price. And the, what we would expect in this case, as I said, we ignore the sign because it's always negative but we look at the magnitude or the absolute value of this number. So we've got five cases. In our example, we have the elasticity equal four. So that means applying what we just said now about elasticity, that means uh, pizza is elastic, okay? So it's an elastic demand, which means, what, what does it mean elastic? So when you change the price, when price change, the quantity demand will respond by more. So let's say if the price changed by 1%, remember, we use the percentage change to calculate elasticity. So if the price change or if the price increased by 1%, 1 
then the quantity demand will decrease by more than 1%. Okay, so that's that's what it means, an elastic demand. Okay, so if if this product, if this good, which is pizza in our example, is elastic, that means if the price change by one percent, the quantity demand will change by more than one percent. Okay, so that's one case, which is elastic demand. That's the, that's the one we looked at in the example. But as I said, we have five different cases for elasticity. Two of these. Five cases are very extreme and it's very difficult to find examples of these two, which means if you have um, changes in the price, that the first one was just perfectly inelastic demand. So just imagine, try to, rem try to find um, any product or a good or service that the quantity demand will not change regardless of the changes, ch any changes in the price. So whatever happened to the price, the quantity demand will be the same. Okay, can can you think of any example? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's very rare. It's very very extreme case. I can think of one example. Yes, tell me. Say. Raise your voice. Drag, drag. Well, that's that's. <laughs> okay. So let's let's say medicine. If 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 a doctor prescribes, like let's say you take um, whatever, like two 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 tablets or anything, so you will you will buy the same. So it doesn't matter if the price change or not. So anyway, so as I said, it's very difficult. I mean, you might be right, but again, it's yeah. Electricity. No, but you'll try if the price change, if the price increase, you'll try to save. In your, uh, in your consumption. So it's, it's again, the quantity will respond. But in, in perfectly inelastic, that's, just remember, this is a very extreme and rare uh, case. So it's very difficult to find an example. That's what I'm saying. So in that case, just imagine the price changed from, let's say, one pound, two pound, 10 pound, 20 pounds, so or whatever happened to the price, you will buy the same quantity. So it's, it's very, very difficult to find an example. I'll think of more examples. I can't pass these to you. But as I said, this is a very, very extreme case. So on the other side, which is uh, th in this case, we will have um, elasticity equal. So when you calculate elasticity, it will be zero. So when you calculate the percentage change um, in quantity demand in this vertical uh, uh, demand curve, it will be zero because there is no change. Okay, so there's, there's no change in the quantity demand. That's why if you divide zero by anything, which is the, in our case is the percent change in price, it will be zero. So that means there is no response at all. So the quantity demand does not respond to changes in the price. And that's the meaning of elasticity. That's what it means. So we're trying to summarize all cases we could have or we could see in the real life. So we could look at, as I said, five cases. So one is perfectly inelastic. That's a very rare one, and it's very difficult to find examples as we tried. And the one when we have unit elastic demand, which means elasticity equal one. So that means the person change in quantity demanded equal the person change in price, which means if the price, if the price change by 1%, the quantity demanded will change by 1%. Okay? So it's like one to one change. But if we have an elastic demand, that means the, 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 the product is, or the quantity demand it responds to the changes in prices. Um, and the response will be much more than the change in the price. So if, and, and that's the case when you have elasticity greater than one. So in our case, four, okay? The pizza, the elasticity is four. That's an elastic good, which means if the price change by 1%, the quantity demanded will change by more than 1%. Okay? In this case, four. So you will have it more than just 1%. So that is an elastic good. So in elastic good, in elastic good means that elasticity will be between zero and one. So it's not going to be zero. Zero, we, we understand that now if it is zero, that means it's perfectly inelastic good. But if it is between zero and one, this is just inelastic uh, demand or inelastic good. Okay? And what it means is 
if the price increases or if the price change by 1%, the quantity demand will change by less than 1%. Okay. That is inelastic. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, the, the quantity demand will change as well, but it will ha by how much? That's the question. Remember, elasticity measures the responsiveness of the quantity demand to changes in the price. So it tells you, it describes to you, it tells you the responsiveness of the quantity demand to changes when the price change. So if there is, a ch if there is no change at all, this we understand this is perfectly inelastic. If the change is more than the change in the price, this is an elastic good. If the change is less than the change in the price, then this is inelastic good, okay? And if it is exactly equal, so that is unit elastic demand. So because the person change in the price equal, or the person change in the quantity demand equal the person change in the price. That's why we, we, we have one for elasticity. So because they both equal, they, if the price change by 1%, the quantity demand changed by 1%, and that's why elasticity is equal to 1. Okay? So these are five possible cases. That's what we're looking at. Okay? And based on this, you, could, you should be able to uh, uh, explain any value you will have for elasticity. So in our case, as I said, we got 4 for pizza. Elasticity equal 4. That means pizza is an elastic good. And again, what does it mean? It means that if the price change by 1%, the quantity demand will change by more than 1%. That's it. Okay? So, uh, so the quantity demand is, is, is very responsive. It's, it's, it's very responsive to the changes in the price. So, okay. So let me, let me think of something important to you. Because what we, we we're going to look at next, that's what we should look at, is why. Or what factors determine this elasticity. What factors explain to us why some in some products or for some uh, goods and services, quantity demand will be very responsive to change in the price, and for other products, it will not? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th th that's, that, that could be an example. But again, one of the things that we just to make it easy to understand why would you um how would you respond to change in the price think of something um important to you whatever this thing is okay whatever this product is so in general let's say food is something important so if the price change you may respond you may try to save on uh, uh food but again you still buying food but you not so your response is not going to be much more than the change in the price okay so if let's say luxury goods if we're talking about uh, a very nice holiday some somewhere in the summer so the price of the the flight ticket change you might change your mind you say well i don't really need to go there i can go somewhere else so again um that's why i was saying now we need to look at which is what the factors that determine elasticity so one of them now we talked ab about now which is the uh, substitutes so the closeness of substitutes which means you remember from last time what we mean by substitute goods so we have um, Pepsi and Coca-Cola they are substitutes because you can they can replace each other so I mean for myself I don't mind to have Pepsi or Coca-Cola yeah I don't know about yourself so you could uh, I mean you may be very keen to have Pepsi um, and you don't prefer Coca-Cola, but for myself, for a soft drink, they both are the same. So if I go any place and they say, well, I ask for Pepsi and they say we have Coca-Cola, I say, well, I really don't mind. So they are very close substitutes. That's for me. So in that case, would you expect my demand on this product will be um, on Pepsi, for example, would be elastic or inelastic? Will be elastic. Why? Because I will respond by to changing the price. So if if uh, if the uh, Pepsi, uh, the price of Pepsi change, uh, well, I can't really have Coca Cola. I can have I can have anything else. So I'm not really keen in in that. So what about complements? Do you remember complements from last time? Complements. These are two goods used together. So 
I just it's need to be charged. Sorry, it's not working. Can you hear me now? Okay, that's great. So we don't need it. So uh, compliments that means two goods you you use together, like tea and sugar. So I mean, for you, you could say, well, I don't actually like sugar with my tea. So it's fine. That's fair enough. It's not compliments for you. But for me, tea and sugar compliments because I have sugar with my tea. Okay. Uh, you could think of um, uh, uh, tea and, and milk. I mean, for Egyptians like me, we don't usually have, uh, we just have black, uh, black tea. So we don't really put, uh, we don't add milk to, the, to tea. But for you, it's saying, you, think, you may think, oh, well, I like a milk with tea. So they are, they are compliments. Okay. So just think of these, these different products. So if you have very close substitutes, so we'd expect demand to be very elastic. And if you don't have these substitutes, then you would expect demand to be inelastic. So again, to make it uh, more simpler, think, think of uh, necessary goods like food. So generally, we would expect, so these all the, sorry. So generally, we would expect food housing to be inelastic because, again, e even if the price change, even if you respond to this, um, the quant demand respond to the, the change in the price, still uh, it's not going to respond as much. But with luxury goods like exotic uh, vacations, again, we would expect these to be more, more elastic goods. Okay? Is this clear? Any questions? So that's one, one thing to explain the factors that affect um, uh, elasticity. One more thing, which is the uh, proportion of income spent on the good. Just let's think of, um, if I ask you, um, how much is, um, how much you pay for, for salt, if you, want to, if you want to buy salt, would you remember? Does it take much of your budget? Nothing at all, yeah? So that's why the demand on, on this product will be inelastic because even if the price change, you, didn't even, you might even not notice that there's a price change, okay? So again, this is very important. So the greater uh, the proportion of income uh, you spend on a good, that means we expect it to be more elastic. But if there's like something like salt, something that you hardly remember, uh, how much you you pay for for sold last time when you went shopping again because it doesn't consume much it doesn't take up much of your uh your your budget um or your income then you don't really uh so it's not really elastic it is inelastic good okay um one more factor here which is the time elapsed since price change so time here is very important because when you have more time that means when you have longer time after the price change, you have enough time to adjust your plans. Then y your, your response will be more, uh, more elastic. So the more time you have, then the more uh, elastic we would expect the demand to be. Okay. So again, it's very important now to understand what is elasticity. It's just a responsiveness. It's a measure of the responsiveness. In our case now, we're looking at price elasticity of demand. So we're looking at the relationship between price and quantity demanded. So basically, it's the responsiveness of the quantity demanded to changes in the price. Because when we move now to talk about income elasticity, so we're looking at income and quantity demanded. But for now, it's if you understand the, what elasticity means in general, it's a responsiveness. It's a measure of responsiveness. So it depends what you're looking at. If you're looking at price uh, uh, elasticity uh, of demand, then we're looking at how responsive the quantity demand will be to changes in the price. Okay? Then we looked at how to calculate this. It's very important because that's the percentage change in Quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. We learn how to calculate the percentage change. So if, you, if you're able to calculate this for quantity, then you, you, it's the same way for price. So it's, div it's, it's the change divided by the average. So the change in quantity divided by the average quantity. It's the change in price divided by the average price. Then you divide the percent change in price over the percent change 
uh, in quant demand, then you get the elasticity. Now it comes, it's very important to understand how to interpret this, how to explain this, okay? So to explain, uh, uh, to explain this, as I said, with price elasticity, it's very important to know that the sign is, is going to be always negative, and that's why we, why we ignore it. Uh, but it will be meaningful with other types of elasticity. So it's very important to understand this. But with the magnitude, with the value of this number, we have five cases, and we looked at these cases, and we understand now what they mean. So one, one or two more things before we move to income elasticity is the elasticity along a linear demand curve. So the demand curve you see now, um, at the midpoint, elasticity equal one. So at the midpoint, so here exactly that's the point, elasticity equal one. Above this price, so the, uh, the price here at this midpoint is 12.5, okay, it's 12.50. So above this price, the demand will be elastic. Below this price, demand will be inelastic, okay? So it's, it's, it's going to be different where you are, depending on where you are on the demand curve. So if you are on the top part of the demand curve, above the midpoint, demand will be elastic. If you below that, demand will be inelastic. The exact point in the midpoint here, at the midpoint, elasticity will be uh, equal uh, to one. So these are different examples. You could try this uh, yourself at home and see when you calculate elasticity, uh, how much elasticity will be or whether it's going to be elastic or, or inelastic. So the, the second point we want to, uh, to look at when we look at price elasticity the relationship between price elasticity and total revenue. If you are a producer, if you are a seller, and it is very important for you to know whether demand in your, the demand in your product is elastic or inelastic. Why? Because this affects the total revenue. What is the total revenue? It's two parts. is the price times quantity. So let's say if you selling those pizzas we talked uh, about in, in the first example, if you, if you sold 20 pizzas, uh, 10 pound each, that means you, the total revenue is 200. So it's 10 times 20. So, which means the total revenue, price times quantity. So this, this, this means it's very important for you as a, as a seller uh, to understand whether the demand in your product is elastic or inelastic. Um, <coughs> because this can affect the total revenue. So the examples we have here, if the demand is elastic and you had a 1% uh, price cut, this will increase the quantity by more than 1% and this eventually will increase the total revenue. But if you did the same when you, the demand is inelastic, that's, this will lead to um, that the revenue will decrease. So you see, you you have the 1% of uh, price cut, but it depends. How this is going to affect the total revenue? So if your product, or if the, if the demand of your product is elastic, that means revenue will increase. If the, uh, uh, if the demand of your product is inelastic, that means demand will decrease. What if the demand was uh, unit elastic? What will happen to the total revenue in this case? It's not going to change. It'll be the same. Yes, right. Be the same. Okay? So that's why it is important for you to understand as, as a seller to understand uh, uh, the, the demand on your, on your product, whether it is uh, elastic or inelastic. Uh, we can represent this. We understand from before that the... Um, Along the same demand curve, elasticity will be different depending on where we are. So at the midpoint, elasticity equal one. Above this price, elasticity or the demand is, elast is elastic. Below that, the demand, demand will be uh, inelastic. So we could look at the, how this is going to affect the total revenue. So what you see now is the total revenue when we have this uh, price cut. because this has all three cases. So here, this part from this point to this point, this is where the um, elasticity, or this is on the midpoint on the demand curve. So when you decrease here, when you're moving from this, the top point is like $25. Well, as you move 
uh, down here on the on the demand curve the total revenue increase until you reach that point which is when the price equal uh, 1250 then the total revenue will reach maximum and then when you go down here the uh, bottom part of the uh, the demand curve the revenue will decrease that is summarized in this in this graph so you'll see this is when this is the top part of the demand curve so while you're decreasing price the total revenue is increasing and then it comes to maximum point this is where the this is the midpoint on the demand curve and then the total revenue uh, increase because this is the inelastic part of the demand curve okay any questions so this is price elasticity of demand if you understand this then income elasticity of demand would be very straightforward so if you understand how we can how we um, what the elasticity is how uh, we calculate elasticity and then how we interpret elasticity is very straightforward so with income elasticity then again think of the two variables we're looking at here so we're looking at how the quantity demanded respond to income in this case to changes in income so how would we calculate this so we calculate it in the same way so it's the person to change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income okay so it's the same way so if you know how to calculate the percentage change then you could easily calculate the uh, income uh, elasticity so how would we interpret the the results or the elasticity in this case we have three cases or basically two cases remember we said the sign now is meaningful it wasn't meaningful with price elasticity it's all going to be always negative we ignore it we don't even uh, report it we don't even write it okay but with income the sign is very important so if we have positive uh, sign uh, for income elasticity that means when income increases quantity demand increases and as i said as we said last time this is a normal good okay so most goods you would think of they are normal because when your income increases you buy more from them so your demand increases as well so these so if the sign of the income elasticity is positive then we have a normal good if it is negative we have an inferior good we talked about this last time so if your income increases your quant the quantity demanded will decrease and this is for certain type of, of, of goods and we call them inferior goods so if you have a normal good we're looking at the magnitude now not just not the sign so the magnitude now so we know the sign is positive if it is positive it is normal so if you have it if, if you have the um, the absolute value is more than um, more than one if it's greater than one or if it is less than one so if it is greater than one so we have income elastic good if we have it less than one so it's income inelastic uh, good so again so basically we focus in two things now the sign so if it is positive we have normal good if it is negative we have an inferior good but with the if it is positive it could be elastic or inelastic so elastic when it is greater than one inelastic if it is uh, less less than one so that's very straightforward with cross elasticity we're looking at two um, two goods in this case we're looking at let's say um, Pepsi coca cola and coca cola or tea and sugar and whatever so we're looking at how quantity demand will respond to changes in the price of another good not the same good so that means with how we calculate it so it's the person change in quantity demanded for one good divided by the person change in price of a different good which could be a substitute or a complement so here as again the sign is very important because it tells you what the nature of these two goods how they are related together whether they are substitutes or complements so if you have positive sign that means the both goods are substitutes if you have if you have negative sign for cross elasticity that means they are complements okay so you see if you understand price elasticity of demand so it's very difficult is <laughs> it's not very difficult to understand the uh, income elasticity and cross elasticity because the idea here is that how 
much the quantity demand will respond to changes in the price if we're looking at price elasticity so income if we're looking at income elasticity to uh, the price of a different of, of another good if we're looking at cross elasticity the sign with price elasticity of demand is always negative and we it doesn't mean anything because it's going to be always negative so it doesn't tell us anything but with income and income elasticity and cross elasticity it's important with income elasticity you have positive sign that means it's a normal good negative sign it's an inferior good with cross elasticity positive sign means that two goods are substitutes negative sign means the two goods are uh, complements that's all any questions okay so let's now just quickly look at the uh, elasticity of supply so elasticity of supply so now we looked at demand we have ty three types of elasticities uh, price elasticity of demand income elasticity and cross elasticity so now hopefully we we understand this now so the same way we could look at supply so the quant how how the quantity supplied will respond to changes in the price and how we calculate this in the same way so we have the percentage change in quantity supplied so this time quantity supplied divided by the person change in price okay that's why i said it's very very important to understand the first one price elasticity of demand so if you understand this one anything else is easy to uh, to follow so <clears throat> let me show you the three cases we have three cases where this one is perfectly elastic we have uh, this horizontal uh, supply curve this one is um, perfectly inelastic so we have similar cases again so these when the elasticity equals zero we have a vertical supply curve and the other two cases in the middle are uh, these are or the other two curves here supply um, curve this one and this one a and b they are unit in, uh, elastic and so uh, the um, elasticity of supply will be will be equal to one and the the common thing between these two curves is that both they go through the origin point so this point so it doesn't matter uh, the slope so the slope is not important as long as they go through this point then these are um, uh, unit elasticity uh, of supply okay so we have uh, the elasticity of supply equal equal to one in this case this one is uh, infinite so we have the elasticity of supply equal in so these are different cases again so how you would you interpret the the results the the last thing we um we will look at is the factors that influence uh, elasticity of supply okay we've got here the resource substitution possibilities so it's the same way we thought of the closeness of substitutes uh, with with price elasticity of demand we could look at the same here so if you have different resources and these resources could be allocated between different different products if it is easy to switch from using these resources in product let's say a to product uh, b then it is is going to be elastic supply going to be less because you can make decisions very quickly you can change plans and so on okay so again the time frame for supply decision is very important because right after the price change you already had your uh, production process already started or in, in plan or everything is planned so it's very difficult to to change or it's very difficult as a supplier or as a seller to respond to changes in the price but as the time goes then it's more flexible now you could you could make some some changes that's why you'll see momentary supply is perfectly inelastic so the moment after the price change so the machines are already working so you can't really stop them you can't really do anything so you can't respond immediately to the change of the price as a supplier okay but in the short run maybe it will be more elastic because you can adjust your plans you can respond to the changes in the price in the very long run then it is most elastic because now as you actually you can change everything okay any questions <clears throat>